I'm joined now by Hardeep Singh Puri, who's India's Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas. India has certainly, sir, and welcome to the show, been benefiting from discounted rates of Russian oil. Does the country have any qualms about continuing to buy so much, given that Narendra Modi has certainly expressed concerns over the invasion, saying now is not the time for war, now is the time to move into a path of peace. Let me first uh, uh, try and correct your perspective. We ended the financial year 2022, that is 31st March 22, the purchases of Russian oil was not 2%, 0.2%, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, uh, we still uh, buy only in a quarter what Europe buys in one afternoon. So let's be very clear about what the perspective is. Where will we buy from? Russia is not the largest supplier of oil to India. Russia has supplied only 0.2%. Now it's one of the top four or five suppliers. And in fact, the largest supplier last month was Iraq. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so that there is no misunderstanding anywhere, we owe a moral duty to our consumers. We have 1.34 billion population, and we have to ensure that they are supplied with energy, mm -hmm. whether it's petrol, diesel. We were the only country in the world which, at the time when we were feeding 800 million people three meals a day, mm -hmm. which we are still doing, the government reduced its revenue in order to make sure that p uh, prices at the petrol bunk didn't go up. So you know, no, we have 60 million people going to the petrol there bunk. There is no moral conflict with buying Russian oil. Oh, absolutely none. Absolutely none. There is no moral conflict. I mean, somebody wants to take an ideological position. Well, but we, we don't buy from X or Y. We buy whatever is available, and I don't do the buying. It's the oil companies who Let's do the buying. Let's be quite clear about this. Um, India is a backdoor into Europe for Russian oil at the moment. You're talking I, about the... Mm. Hang on, hang on, let me just finish. You're talking about the oil that comes in and is, and is used for... And you say there's no, no moral issue with this in, 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 in providing energy for 1.4 billion uh, people. But, but let's be quite clear. Russian oil is imported, it is refined, and then it is exported to Europe, sir. Not, that is not, a that was, that was done. By, that was done by some private sector companies, not by the OMCs. Where, who buys Russian oil, where it is refined... You're not it's denying a, that's happening. No, no, there's no question. Of, I, I have no... Uh, we have nothing to do with that. First of all, the government doesn't do the buying. Let me mm -hmm. be very clear. Oil trade is conducted by economic entities. Mm -hmm. All right? Today I met the minister from Guyana. They've got a production come. We'll buy from there. We're buying from Canada. Do you know something? I bought last year from the United States $20 billion worth, which is almost half of what I buy from OPEC. Mm. No, we will buy oil, gas from wherever we can get it. What if the EU or the US were to ask India specifically to halt Russian oil purchases? Would I'll, you... tell you, I'll tell you something. First, you should address that question to the EU or to the United I'm States. I'm interested in No, so but respect. I'm telling you, because if India did not buy or someone else didn't buy Russian oil, and if Russian oil were to go off the market, what would happen to international prices? These people would turn around and then the same... Somebody is cutting supply. We have more people buying it. The price will go up to $200. Minister, with respect, I'm asking you a simple question. If the EU or the US were to ask India to halt... I Russia don't address hypothetical... Purchases. I don't address hypothetical questions. If the EU wants to come up with something, they will talk to us. We will examine what's in a... So what is on offer now? We have a situation where Hungarian oil can come in through a pipeline and it's exempt from the uh, so-called price cap. Chinese oil goes through... Russian oil goes to China through the pipeline. It is exempt. Japan can can buy it. So we'll, I'd like to find out whom the price cap is aimed at. Okay. And we'll have a good, talk robust that. discussion on that. Because does India have a backup plan should the West tighten sanctions on First Russia? First of all, we have many backup plans. First of all, and I don't look at the way, the way you are looking at it. We have had healthy discussions going on with the West, the United States, and the Europeans. Mm. I think this is something you're creating in a uh, TV studio. No, well, no, 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 that's not fair. That's not fair. Well, I mean, I'm, you I'm, know the narrative is out there. I'm just crossing I, I have just come back from the United States. Mm. Do you know what happened in my bilateral discussions with me? No, I don't have to. <laughs> it's privileged conversation. But I don't feel an... I've said on, re mm. I've said on record, not only now to you, Andy, but to but you earlier and to... Ed, we don't feel any pressure. Mm. Modi's government doesn't feel the pressure. We are the fifth largest economy in the world. We are the one country where we are making the transition. Mm. Transition, when you have increases in oil prices, they have consequences. One of the consequences is there'll be inflation and recession. But one of the consequences is we'll make the transition to green energy just that much faster. Mm. And I want to talk about that. But before I do, let me just press you a little further. Will India cooperate with 
G7 attempts to cap the price of Russian seaborne oil. I have, no, I'm surprised that you're fixated on a proposal whose, which has not been fully spelt out, number one. Number two, India will examine it. India will respond according to its supreme national interest. Mm. And I'm telling you, we will take a view and we will discuss it with everyone. So, and, and I'd be happy to come back to you and tell you what our response is. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's, I'll, I'll hold you to that if sure. I can, sir, with, sure. the, with the greatest of respect. Let's get back to Dr. Sultan's comments um, earlier on today, um, who is the uh, head of the uh, National Oil Company here. He's also the uh, special envoy on climate. And I, and I started this uh, part of the show by... Um, discussing the fact that this is a country that has embedded energy diversification in its economic growth story, originally reliant on oil and gas profits. And of course, you know, it, this is a good time uh, for oil and gas uh, prices, uh, but ha ha has a story of energy diversification going forward. Let's just have a listen to what else Dr. Sultan had to say today at the meeting that you're at. The world needs oil the solutions it can get. It is not oil or gas or solar or wind or nuclear or hydrogen. It is oil and gas and solar and wind and nuclear and hydrogen. It is all of the above. That was Dr. Sultan speaking earlier today at the conference that, that you have been at. And I, I know that you, uh, there was an inordinate amount of, well, not inordinate, I mean, a huge amount of bilateral trade between India uh, and the UAE. And that's a really burgeoning story. Do you agree with what Dr. Sultan said there? And what do you see from your perspective as the opportunity for energy diversification, the use of solar, wind, renewables going forward? Look, what's, what's your look, position? I think, I think perhaps... Um... Some people are not unaware of the fact. What he said is what we are practicing. Mm. He's not saying anything with which I can disagree. He says that the transition will come not only from the continued use of fossil fuels, but also from solar, from wind, from X, from Y, Z, and from all of the above. Now, let me tell you what we've done. We are the one country in the world which has demonstrated that we can bring the cost of solar down. We brought it from 25 cents down to 3 cents. Mm. Now, if you have to make green hydrogen, what do you need? You need cheap uh, power and you need electrolyzers. We are getting both. Mm. We, are, we are one of the most ambitious and comprehensive green hydrogen plants in the world. Biofuels, we have gone from 1.4% blending in 2014, Andy, to 10% now. We had a target of 20% biofuel blending by 2030. We brought it out to 24, mm. 25. If you look at compressed biogas, we have 42 plants producing compressed biogas. Our target is 5,000 plants, mm. making ethanol from agricultural waste. So India is doing precisely what uh, Minister mm. Sultan is recommending. So we have no difficulty on that. What we have a concern on is that if you want to make the transition from the current position to green energy, you have to survive the present. Mm. And that is where I think the high oil prices have unintended consequences, some good, some bad. The, the bad ones are that you will find that the situation, which is already inflationary because of the stimulus packages which went in pair, will become more inflationary and recessionary. And the, uh, the good ones are that we will be... You know, mother is a necessity of... Uh, oh. a necessity is the mother of invention. You're English speaking. So we will go into green energy faster, which yes. we are doing. And we've just released 1 million square kilometers out of the 3.5 for exploration production. Let we've got all the major guys coming in.